Hello and welcome back. Managing tasks in a project isn't like checking things off of a simple to-do list. It requires delegation, tracking, and a lot of organization to make sure deadlines are met, priorities are placed, time is saved, and information doesn't get lost. With Odoo projects, we can create tasks, subtasks, make them recurrent, assign them to the right employees, and define deadlines. And guess what else? It also enhances communication between the company's different teams who are working on the same project. The result, therefore, is clear. Stealthy Wood is a more efficient and proactive company. And that's all things to Odoo projects. So let's dive in and see how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is jump straight to the project application. And then we're going to go to configuration, settings, and from the settings page, we want to be sure that we have subtasks activated, which I've already done. If you need to go ahead and select that and be sure you click on save. Now we can also choose for which projects we would like to use subtasks. So we don't have to activate that for every project, um, but we can take advantage of that option. So let's go to configuration, projects, and I'm going to choose one of my projects. Let's take research and development as an example. All right, I'm going to click on edit and go to the settings tab, and then I can activate subtasks right here. All right, and so once I've done that, let's see what it looks like when I go to create a subtask. So I'm going to jump to my project. I'm going to create a new task. All right, so let's just go ahead and say um, new project, not very creative, but we're going to start with that. All right. So we have our new project. I'm going to add my customer. Let's say it's Azure Interior. Um, I can also add a deadline. Let's say the deadline is going to be for next week. All right. And then I can add a parent task. This, so this is how I'm going to make this a subtask of another task is to select what we call the parent task here. So let's go ahead and make um, the parent task um, room two decoration as an example. All right, then we can add the other information such as description, extra info, etc. And then we're going to save it just like that. All right, so then we'll be able to access that parent task by clicking right here. We'll be redirected and I see there are actually several subtasks for this parent task. And we can check out all of the subtasks simply by clicking. But let's go back to new project. Now we can also work with multiple levels. So your subtasks can have their own subtasks, which is really nice. So let's see what that looks like. First of all, we'll have this smart button here if you have the subtasks option activated on the project. So let's go ahead and click on this. And I'm going to create a new one. Now, by default, the subtask will inherit um, the customer and other information from the parent task. So in this case, we have the title of the parent task as well and a colon. And then we can go ahead and either change this completely or to really make it clear that it is a subtask of my task new project. I'm simply going to put one. All right, just like that. And then we can save. All right, and then once again, we'll be able to access that child task um, from the parent task, just like that. So we see that there's one related. So by default, subtasks are also created under the same project. So let's jump back quickly to my subtask. We see that the project is research and development. However, you can also select another default project for your subtasks, and you can define that on the project configuration. So let's go back to configuration, projects. I'm going to select research and development. That's the project we're working with. We go to settings and then we can change that subtask project here. So let's imagine that I would like um, all the subtasks that are created to go to their own project. Maybe it will just help me stay even more organized. I can select that here. And then we're going to save this. And then when I go back to create um, a new subtask, so let's go even deeper. Let's create a subtask for our subtask. That's a subtask. All right. And I click on create. We're going to see that the project now by default is customization. So I won't have to manually change that if I know that all of the subtasks will go to this particular project. So again, that's a super useful tool just to um, help you stay organized. Now you can transform an existing task into a subtask as well. All right, and all you have to do, so let's go to our project. Um, let's select a task 
here. All you have to do is add the parent task as we did when we were first creating a subtask. All right, so I can select any of these. Likewise, if it is already a subtask, to remove it or to make it unrelated to the task, you simply have to remove the parent task for it to be its own independent task. Now, what's really great is that subtasks, they don't have to all be assigned to the same person. So you can assign them to different people. Um, and that's really great. So let's imagine that um, I'm the person who is working on um, this new project, but I have a couple of subtasks and I want to delegate some responsibility. All I have to do is edit who it's assigned to. All right, so we're gonna give this one to Cesar. All right, let's save. And we'll give this one to Phil, just like that. So it's extremely easy to stay organized in this way. Now, something else that's also super useful is recurring tasks. So let's go back to configuration settings and be sure we have the recurring tasks option activated as well. And remember, be sure you click on save if you're just now activating it. So let's see how this works. We're gonna go back to our project. All right, and let's choose a task that we, we would like to be recurrent. Okay, so I'm going to select uh, unit testing here. All right, we're gonna click on edit and we see this checkbox recurrent, which I will select. All right, then we're gonna see this recurrence tab here. Now here we're going to be able to select how often we would like this task to repeat itself. So here I have repeat once um, every week on Wednesdays until I can choose an end date, I can add a number of repetitions, or I can say forever, which is what I'll do here. And so then we'll see the next occurrences. All right, and so once we've reached that date, a task will be generated um, as it is recurrent. So a specific task will be created. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and then we're gonna be able to check out those recurrent tasks right here in the smart button. So once that date is reached and the task slash subtask is generator, the use, generated, excuse me, the user will be able to edit them individually as well. And we can even make those changes apply to future or all tasks if we would like to. So here I'm going to go to one of my recurrent tasks. I'm gonna click on edit. All right, and you'll see right away that as soon as I click on edit, it's gonna ask me if I would like to edit only this task or this and following tasks or all tasks that are available. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and assign to someone and I'll say this and all following tasks and click on save. All right, so it's super simple to set up both subtasks and recurrent tasks as well, and it will just improve your organization so much more. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.